chapter 2. It's kind of like chapter 1, but it's a little bit different. Did you know that? If you didn't know it while I'm talking tonight, read both of them. You'll see what I'm talking about. So, as Solomon was writing these Proverbs down about the wisdom, the knowledge of God, the information about our Creator, it reminds me kind of uh, algebra, some parts of the Bible. Let me explain. Let me explain. You slide over to right, right there. Right, right there, right there. Slide right there. You stay right there. There cannot be no words right here in this section. All right? Okay? No, you can't move back over there. There's no words right there. Okay? 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 Oh, I'm never going to use this. I'm never going to use it. I'm never going to use it. Ain't that what you said about algebra, fractions, information, all of that stuff at school? Some of your kids have done been saying it this year, right? Why are we looking at this? Why are we studying this? I'm never going to use this stuff. Why do I need this information? I can't remember it. I'm going to tell you something tonight that is some information. It's called knowledge. And what you do with it is going to determine the rest of your life. Now, knowledge is information. Wisdom is an action word. Wisdom is taking knowledge and doing something with it. Okay? The Bible tells us that he that knoweth to do good and doeth not, it is sin. If you know not to do something, all right? If you know that something is, is good, you should be doing it and then you don't, well, that's wrong. Hey, put that down. Put that down. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. 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 It's okay. We got it. We got it. Just cut it off. Let's go. Let's go. We're at church. And you can look at that game all night long, brother. All right? Now listen. I know you think this information does not pertain to you, but it does. Okay? Pay attention. This is what Solomon wrote to his boy. Alex, look at what this says. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turn in your ear to wisdom and apply in your heart to understanding. And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and you will find the knowledge of God. So if you look for the knowledge of God, if you want to know about God, look for it. Do you know what you'll find? You'll find information about God. Do you want to know how somebody can stick closer than a brother? Find out some information about how God stays with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you to the very end of the age is what He said. When's that age going to end? It's never going to end. So that means it's going to be with you forever and ever and ever. So if you want to know what kind of friend God is, how He's going to stick with you, read the Bible. And then you can know that God is going to be with you. He's going to. Now wisdom says, I know that God's going to be with me, so when I start to feel alone, I'm going to put that knowledge in, into action. I'm going to remember, I'm going to decide to remember that my God is with me and I'm not alone. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't decide to use that wisdom, Satan will make you forget it. And you will feel alone. And you will feel a lie. Because the truth of the matter is that God is with you. And wisdom puts that in motion. Wisdom is stating that Hey, I don't feel like I got anybody with me at the moment, but I know my God is with me. I don't feel very secure at the moment. I do feel a little undone, but I know that my God is with me. That's how some people look like they're wise, and some people look unwise. 
because some people have discovered the knowledge, the truth of the Word of God, and they are choosing to put it into motion, put it into action. Y'all, the word love is an action word. It's not a feeling that you have. It's something that you do. Wisdom is putting knowledge to use. Do you think that God gave us all this information about Him to not do something with? He gave it to us to use, right? I mean, that's why you have the information so that you can do something with it. So that is why Solomon is writing to his boy. Boy, let me tell you, if you will look for it, if you will look for it, if you want to know about God, you'll find it. You will understand the fear of the Lord. You will find the knowledge of God. You will know what it means to respect the Lord. Verse 7 says that, um, I'm sorry, verse 6 says, The Lord gives wisdom, and from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. Do you ever feel like you are above reproach? Let me tell you something, Christian friend. Being above reproach is what we're called to be, right? That means that can't nobody say something bad about you and it be true. So when somebody starts running you down, my Christian friend, you know that it ain't true because you ain't done that. Because you're living above that reproach. That means when somebody goes and tells you a lie on your preacher, you should be thinking, no, that ain't my preacher. My preacher's living above reproach. He wouldn't do that. But instead, nowadays, this is what we have. It figures. It figures. Right? Because people are not trying to live above reproach, which is in the knowledge of God, which is exercising the wisdom of God. Instead, anything goes. My God will guard me. When people start bad-mouthing me or running me down, what I have learned, it used to be bothersome and I would take it personal and it hurt my feelings. But now the first thing that God reminds me of, it's like He smacks me upside the head with it. It's like this person needs to be prayed for because they are doing something dangerous. They are trying to get in my way. And I'm reminded of that automatically. It didn't used to be like that. That come with with getting the knowledge that my God is going to guard me. He's going to protect me. He's going to protect us. He's going to. He's going to fight for us. And when we let Him do that, when we let Him protect us, you feel a lot more secure than you trying to protect yourself, right? He guards the course of the just. So if you are trying, God's got your back. He does. Who can say something bad about you, Miss Rita? What you gonna do? Hmm? You tell them like, oh, you ain't, you ain't saying that about me. My God, He knows the truth. It's all gonna come out on what day? Wash day, Judgment Day. Yeah, it's the same day. <laughs> same day. You know they started that back when they used to have to scrub clothes. So you know they meant it. It's all going to come clean on wash day. I bet it was hard to get everything clean on wash day back then, but they did it, right? That's right. And it's all going to come clean on wash day. You better believe Mama Tot knows what she's talking about. That's right. So God will guard the course of the just. Verse 9 says, My son, then you will understand what is right and just and fair. Every good path. My son, You will understand the way to go. You will understand God's will. You will understand if you seek God, if you seek Him with all your heart, mind, and soul, you love God, then you are going to seek His path and you're going to find it. Going down through life, I mean, there's a lot of unknown sometimes, right? We don't know, how's this going to work? How's this going to go? How's this supposed to play out? What am I supposed to do in this? Having confidence that you are in God's will is is a rare thing, but it is achievable. When we are seeking Him, you just wind up on the right path. You know? You You just wind up in the right place. Verse 10 says, For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. 
My child, that's what's going to happen to you. You seek God, then He will enter into your heart and knowledge about God is not going to be convicting to your soul. What's it going to be? Pleasant to your soul. Have you got to the place in your spiritual walk yet where you're not just feeling condemned all the time by the weight of your sin, but you actually are starting to feel forgiven? Huh? It's a wonderful feeling. The fact that my God has forgiven me of my sins, has paid for my sins, and now I no longer live condemned on this planet, but I have a a future waiting for me, a hope that I get to tell all of y'all about. And live out with with realization that this is just a short little little this is the rest area of the world not the church i mean the world is the rest area of the world <laughs> yeah you can as you a sound bite jody <laughs> the world is the rest area of the world <laughs> yeah and we're talking about wisdom <laughs> Now, speaking of speaking, verse number 11, discretion will protect you. (laughs) That means sometimes. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. When's the last time you thought about what you were going to say before you said it? It's kind of like that. You know, normally if you think about it before you say it, what comes out is better. Usually, right? Sometimes I can't think about have y'all, listen, for real though, you might want to pause, but there's some times that since COVID, you ain't really got it. They might need to hear this. Um, have y'all just forgot, like just been like, your brain just blank? I'll be talking about something and then forget what I'm talking about while I'm talking about it. Y'all know how dumb that makes me feel? Worse than normal. I mean... Wow. <laughs> the Bible says, confess your faults one to another. <laughs> you shall be free. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it didn't used to be that way. The, a lot of y'all experiencing that now? Like for real? <sighs> they did them Chinese, man. they after us. Y'all. Is 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 this is further proof because it hasn't happened while I was preaching. It's further proof that the Holy Spirit does the preaching. Okay? Because if it was up to me, it'd just be a bunch of uppity, 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 uppity. What was I saying? I don't know. Jesus. I don't Yeah. It's been happening a lot. Kevin's a preacher's kid. He knows. You go home after church. Preachers like, what was the sermon about today, son? What do you say? Jesus. <laughs> Preachers' kids, that's what, that's what y'all did too, right? It's about God, Jesus. He loves us. He really does. He loves us. <laughs> oh, me. Anyway, anyway. So discretion will protect you. Understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who leave the straight path to walk in the dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. You see what he's saying right here? Wisdom will save you from all of this bad stuff, this bad path, this bad direction that you're trying to go with your life. How do you know what is wrong is that you learn what is wrong. And you don't do that. If a cop comes up to you and says, hey, don't do that, that's against the law, and you say, okay, and you do it anyway, you can expect there to be some repercussions. Right? I'm hopeful that you get hit upside the head or arrested or something like that because if the authority figure tells you this is wrong and you do it anyway, then you deserve to be hit upside the head with a ball-peen hammer. If I feel this way, how do you think God feels? He is telling us with His Holy Spirit, with His Bible, the knowledge about God's ways are everywhere. 
He designed you. He created you. Your own morality is coded into you by your Creator so that you know right from wrong from the get-go. Okay? You just do. Some people are going to stand before Almighty God one day and they're going to try this one. I didn't know. They're going to try. But the Bible says that on that day, they will not be able to plead ignorance. They cannot say, I didn't know. I think that you already have the knowledge of God built inside of you. I know that the Bible says that God sheds His light on all the creation. And I believe that since our Creator created us, this is what I believe. I believe that since He created us, He gave us some inside information about Himself. I think that we already know most of the Ten Commandments before we can read. We know that when something is wrong, it makes you feel bad. So you shouldn't keep doing it, or you'll keep feeling bad. We know this. God made us this way. But there are going to be people. Child... As it says right here, wisdom will save you from the ways of the wicked. The more information you find out about Christ, the more you read your Bible. Y'all, let me tell you something that delights my soul. I, I, it, I'm just, mm, make me smile, make me smile, make me cry. I open up my Bible app, and that, that little red-headed young man right there be done read it like every day. Every day doing, not just reading a verse and then sharing, hey, look at me, I read the Bible. She's not sharing, she's just doing Bible studies. Devotions. Just over and over and over and over and over, like every day. And when I get on there, I just smile and I'm proud because, you know, it's good, right? And I'm like, well, I better get on that app. I can't be letting Kaylee outdo me, you know. That wisdom that you're taking in is going to guard you, it's going to help you, and help you to know when that wrong path shows up and you got a whole car full of people and they drunk off of Natty Lights and they're talking about, hey, let's go riding. And you're like, what? What do you say? No. That's right. I, you worried me a second. Like, did she not hear me? Is, it, is she thinking about it? It's no, right? It's no. That's right. And that wisdom will serve you well. Now, in verse number 16, so that, that evil man is going to persuade you. He's, he's one of the dudes that wants you to go off and he's like, you know, let's go, let's go have us a drink or three. Yeah, let's go do that. We ain't going to hurt nobody. We ain't going to hurt nobody. We ain't going to hurt a soul. Let's just go off and do that. And in the meantime, you know, crank, crank up the music, right? Get a little dancing going. A little Carlton, you know, have a little fun, right? We ain't heard nobody. We ain't heard nobody. You might can resist your dude friends. Oh, but there's more. All right, dude. It will also save you from the adulteress. That's that's the female. Oh, and see, this is from the point of talking to his son. Um, you can also look at this as uh, adulterer if you're a female. Okay? Look at what that says. Mm -hmm. It will also save you from the adulterer, from the wayward wife or husband with him or her seductive words. So, it goes either way. Somebody going to come up on you and the reason I know this is because it happens to everybody. Somebody going to say something inappropriate to you. Nowadays, it, it's less likely to happen because, because now all you got to do is just say, hey, Eddie looked at me funny and everybody's like, he sure did. I bet he did. I know he did. Mm -hmm. Guilty. Right? So, man, nowadays, you better watch how you look and act, and react, and it better be some of these long hugs, you know what I'm talking about? Patty pat, 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 you know? 
You've been uncopped a case. I found out a while ago I might have a warrant on, for uh, my arrest in Florida because I didn't pay that toll ticket. And I'm like, I didn't got I didn't cop a case. And like, no, you didn't cop a case. Like, oh, like, that would be bad, you know. Like I'd be, they'd be taking me out of church with the coat over my head. Should have paid the toll. It's up to over twenty dollars now. It's only been since when did we go? Look at Alicia. She's like, no, we're gonna pay it. Don't worry. <laughs> And Jackson's like, is he going to jail? Is he going to jail? He's going to go home and it, there ain't no telling what is going to go come out tonight. Yeah, and the preacher's getting arrested more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I, I didn't know. So I'm not going back to Florida. I'm, I'm just going to save up, pay him 50 cents a week. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that, Kevin? Plan. No, you ain't gonna pay for me, brother. Now this this lady, <laughs> this lady, um, all three of you gals back there, Elizabeth, um, Rainy and Lily, y'all probably about that age, Ellie. Kaylee, you done you done boomed past it. All right. Y'all starting to get up on where a lot of feelings are increasing. And a lot of feelings that people of the opposite sex make you feel. For instance, suppose John Travolta come walking by. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe not John Travolta. Suppose Burt Rent. No. All right. Suppose Tom from Hollins comes walking by. All right. You know what I'm talking about? And, he's, and he says, that's Spider Man, right? And he says, Ellie Webb, I'm Spider-Man. I'm the real web slinger, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, if it was the real Tom Hollins, I don't care if his shoes are wooden or not. If he come up to you, would you talk to him? Okay. Now, I want you to understand, if you are going to pass out from him walking in the room, then you're probably going to do whatever he says. Yeah. That's not wise. That's not wise. That's how you catch stuff. Don't do that. Okay? Don't ever let nobody talk you into doing something you shouldn't do. Please. Don't. They may be smooth talking. They may be, don't you want to be cool? Don't you want to know me? Don't you want everybody to know you? And we're like, I know who I am. I don't need you. All right? Hey, that's who y'all are. They, you ain't got to be tempted by that. You know it's temptation, so don't be tempted by it, right? It will save you from the adulteress. She has left the partner of her youth. She done left who she was supposed to be with and, and uh, ignored the covenant that she made before God. So this is a woman that's done got married and is supposed to be wholesome and stick with it. And what's she doing? She's over there enticing you. Her and a little time hollering up in there like, come on over here, let's do something fun. Her house leads down to death. Her past to the spirits of the dead. Which means if you follow that temptation, young people, if you follow that temptation, there's a very good chance that it will lead you to hell. Look at him. If you don't hear nothing else I say, hear me. Savannah, y'all listen to this. 
Temptation of the body. Temptation of sexual type, type temptation. That is the worst type of temptation that will overtake somebody, especially a young person. Everybody that has made it past youth has done went through it and hopefully been delivered from it. You've got a big battle that you are just entering in. A huge battle. There is help available in the form of wisdom. You know the right path that God has for you. We find it in His book. You have been given the wisdom to act on it the right way. If you turn away from it, it's only going to lead to destruction. Let me say this. Little girls, listen to me. Each one of y'all are very special, precious individuals. Okay? Don't ever let somebody treat you as an object. Alright? You are God's creation. Don't you ever let somebody be mean to you or talk down on you or something like that. You be proud of who you are. And if you can't be proud of who you are, then change who you are. Okay? You stand up before God and, and He will guard you. He will. That's what the Bible says. And I want, I want you all to realize all the good that God has in store for you. Alright? Somebody's mean to you, you just let somebody know. Okay? Don't ever keep something inside like you gotta handle it on your own. You don't. Okay? Now, in verse 20 it says, Thus you will, thus, which means if you've done all of this, then this will happen. It's an if then situation, folks. If you seek out God and you attain the knowledge of God and you follow Him on His path and you do not go the ways of the adulteress or the temptress, um, then you will walk in the ways of good men and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn away from it. There is no way that you can have a future Past this life without God. It's just not. You're not gonna. But you can have life with God now. Solomon, the wisest guy ever, was trying to get his child to understand that if you seek God, good things are going to happen. If you don't seek God, destruction is going to happen. Wisdom means I have found out this information and now I'm going to be wise and I'm going to use it. God has told me how to have a better life. How to resist temptation. How to avoid pitfalls that are definitely going to bring me down to destruction. God has told us how to deal with it. Will you? That determines how wise you really are. You don't have to be old to be wise. You don't have to have gray hair to be wise. You can just know what to do and do it correctly. That's being wise. And that's what God's called us to do. So the next time you start looking through the Bible and you're like, well, I'm never going to use that stuff. I don't need to know all of that. I don't need all of that information. If you seek it, it's going to help you. It's going to set you on the right path. And what's the opposite of wisdom? Moron! That's right. So if you don't want to be wise, you can you cannot be. Yeah. I mean, God will let you be as dumb as you want to be, right? He let me for a long time. Like, you want to be dumb? Go ahead. And I was like, okay. 